that's something that I think uh, really shows that we take issues of diversity very seriously uh, and something exciting in, in regard to working with our LGBT plus communities um, on an event that I think will really stimulate interest far beyond the political city region. Uh, on fairness and social justice, we launched the first consultation on the Liverpool City Region Fair Employment Charter, uh, working with uh, our unions to try and get this out so that we can get um, true consultation from as many people as we can, it obviously include businesses, but uh, all uh, aspects of the, uh, the community. We launched our Zero Suicide Alliance. You might remember we talked about this and people asked why Zero Suicide. And when you asked them what number would you come for then? What would you be happy with? A hundred suicides? So it's a Zero Suicide Alliance. It's very ambitious. Um, it's unlikely, isn't it, in, a, in the real world that we'll be able to prevent every individual who gets to that stage from taking their own lives. But that has to be our intent. It has to be the overall ambition. We secured £8 million to tackle homelessness through a housing first approach and we're going to launch that in the next few months. So a lot of work going into things. This is a, a, an extortionate amount of behind the scenes and, and front end work that we've done so that we can genuinely make this a housing first approach. Something that's been demonstrably successful in America but also in places like Finland. And we signed up to the Armed Forces Covenant and we're embedding that into the policy making of the Liverpool City region. So it's not just an add-on, it's actually hardwired to what we're doing. But that's just an overview of some of the things that we've delivered in the last year. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the support of the members of this committee. Uh, I told you how important I thought scrutiny was the very first time we met. I, I, I stand by that. I want um, this committee to have access to as much information as you want to have access to because that's the only way that we'll truly get uh, transparency in the decision making processes of the command authority so that those accusations that uh, are often thrown at these politicians can't be, we want to be an exemplar in the city region and I, I want to thank uh, everybody here for the hard work that I know that you've put into this I've appeared to you five times over the last year um, and I hope that underlines the importance of what I believe this committee's role is and um, I subscribe absolutely to everything that you're doing. The um, consistency of the approach that we're taking is that obviously everything goes to the forum of the command authority but if we can and we, we've tried this and we have pre scrutiny of certain things, I think that's really important for, for you here to get first sight of it if that is at all possible for the mechanisms. And I want to take, take the opportunity to thank you, Chair, for our uh, vice chairs, of course, for the work that you've done on this committee, uh, the hard um, work and the time and effort that people put in to support and that. Uh, but I'm happy, Chair, to take any questions. Thank you, Steve. I think <coughs> on behalf of the committee, um, we can thank you for the time that you put into the, the uh, ONS uh, scrutiny uh, committee this year. You've been very forthcoming when it's come to speaking to us and answering our questions. So I'll ask members if they've got any questions and I'll take uh, three at a time, please. So, um, Councillor Burns. Hi, Steve. You're the retired psychological therapist from Sunderland. Um, you've been involved in the Can you actually send 
it out to all the members of the uh, of the scrutiny of the things that you have done in the last year. I know you've mentioned them, but it'd be better if we didn't invite you because we have to. Well, certainly in Halton, we report back to members, you know, what's going on in the LCR scrutiny. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, Steve? <laughs> Major 
says he should have a trap system. Where do we go with this? You know, because all the plans are there. Our system was costed right down to the last penny. Uh, Edinburgh got theirs, Manchester got theirs, all overall on costs. You know, we were costed, but we got nowhere. And that was even another way of government. Uh, so I hope you're starting with your officers now to progress it again, because it's clean there, that's the main thing, isn't it? Slightly left field question. Uh, the Prime Minister announced the other day there was going to be a big billion pound plus fund for Brexit towns. And I noticed you said towns and not the city regions, but there are towns within the city region, many of whom obviously voted to remain, and there seems no obvious reason why they should be penalised and um, locked out of that fund. discussions with the government as to whether the city region or parts of the city region will be eligible for that funding or are the criteria so tightly defined that we'll never be in that position. Thanks, Councillor Dewey. Councillor Wainwright. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, just one or two points, really. Uh, one, we did ask for the, the Metro Mayor's report to come to be forwarded to us in advance actually speaking on this day, but I wonder if, that's, if that could be possible. Um, second one is, would you see the HS2? Um, how will that work? And what effect will it have on Uncal Station, which is probably the last station in, uh, in the city region before it leaves, leaves the borders? Um, the other one would be on the bus legislation. I'd like to see uh, some pre scrutiny on that from HF uh, to, to have a look at um, how, how we see it as a, as a, as a scrutiny body of public recommendations for it, so if, if, if that's possible. Uh, happy with the diversity programme, even though we don't know what it is yet, but anything to do with diversity is our every way. Uh, housing first approach, again, yes, happy with that. We, we, need, to, we need to get people off the streets. Liverpool at the minute, I, I can tell you a lot of people is, is, is looking similar to, to London these days and it, 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 it's not a good one for the, for the region but we need to get these, we need to help these people get off the street. Um, with regards to the, the, the 8.3 million pound for cyber walking routes, well, well, um, overdue on, on, on that and uh, hopefully we, we, we can get uh, do something on that as well. I'd like, to, I'd like to have that as a scrutiny topic as well, if that's possible. Um, and that, I think, is that, well, I think Council will fall right. It's, 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 it's good for you to come and tell us about this, but we need to beat it out a bit more in, uh, in, in written form so we can take it back to our own, own owners and, uh, and, and explain what is exactly what's going on and what you're doing. Because some people just sort of um, lost in the cloud somewhere when it, when it comes to the information coming. Thank you, Councillor Wainwright. Steve? Thanks, Chair. Um, clean air strategy first, and what we're doing, we've set up um, a commission for the six districts, and that's because um, far too long, as you know, in our city region, we've had individual councils do things, um, and on something like clean air, just doesn't make sense, does it? In fact, it doesn't make sense that just the Liverpool City region will do clean air because, all right, we clean our air up somehow as if the air from Manchester or Cheshire or Manchester is not going to affect us or Cumbria or, or, or Wales. So we're working on a much wider geography on this issue. Uh, myself and Andy Burnham were uh, both in London for that meeting and we're sharing best practice. So it goes beyond that. But you're right. How do we tackle some of the waste excesses? I think it is by providing a genuinely attractive public transport offer. Um, we've got some really good stuff in the city, really first class. Um, we've got the youngest bus fleet outside of London, so less than seven years. Um, more than 50% of those are hybrid buses, so a lucky or uh, hybrid. Um, we're investing £460 million into the most sophisticated road stock in the whole country. We're going to have two new ferries, um, we're having a cycling, what, 
so we are doing stuff, but I agree with you, Ken, the last bit that I've been missing is it's round. Um, this for me is indicative of what happened when we didn't have that collaboration between the six districts. Basically, we had local authorities falling out of each other, we did get SRAM, in fact it cost us millions of pounds, but we lost out on the ability really to transform structurally our transport off in the city region. I've met, they've been working together for 20, 30 years, they still on March, I've got the Manchester and their tram system. She keeps on going further and further and bigger. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky way to um, collective work and they've done that. So that's what we need to do. I'm not going to say here um, that we are working with governments to look at a tram, but we're looking at alternative forms of transport in the public sector. Um, I think to, to actually start that debate can open up a whole can of worms around trams, what happens with Kirby and, uh, and Liverpool. So we'll go about it like we've done with everything else. We'll do it on an evidence base and ensure that we get the, the business case to the right stage so that we can put it to government. Um, but it's not something that uh, we haven't considered. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, I think uh, you can answer what um, Council Hughes' point is about an economic stimulus. That would be a huge economic stimulus for the, for the city region, but that alongside the things, the things I can say, and obviously, like we saw, the things that we can't because they just set the age from Army, um, John Army, uh, 1.6 billion pound Brexit break hype, as has been uh, uh, labelled. We are in discussions, obviously, as a combined authority to see what we can get from it. And you're right, uh, just because we have a, a city doesn't mean that we don't have towns, and we have got five at least um, uh, boroughs, and within those there are towns within each of those boroughs. So we want to grab as much as we possibly can. But the way governments are doing things is, as I said, with an evidence based on the area question, and that's what we're trying to pull together for. Them. Um, we need to know how they're going to distribute the criteria, what the formula is, but also um, what the other considerations are. And that's what we're trying to get off. Um, we've got great relations with government, I have to say, um, because it's all usual channels, and it's our office is open to um, civil service. They do that on a daily basis. So we are getting information about how to control these bids, and that's why I think we've been so successful. 189 million pounds, you know, in the last few 12 months or so, uh, because we know by talking to the civil servants what sort of bids they're looking for, and we're constructing our bids for what they want, and they're going and they're going to sign, um, signing it off. Um, but we are, we're looking to see a job that we much uh, probably work with. Um, certainly, yeah, it's like South Water, for instance. Uh, I went up there two weeks ago to speak to the owner of Pleasureland about the ambitious proposals for what's happening there. Really, really exciting. If we can get them to the stage where they do stand up as a business case, the pots of money that I know that we can access, that's just getting me the time and these things. And then Kevin, um, so on HS2 first and, and, and run the station. As you know, HS2 wasn't coming here anyway because we were missed off. We were completely last 20 miles campaign and all that sort of stuff, we um, were part of the thinking. And what the approach that we took was, instead of moaning at government, provide them with the evidence <coughs> to prove our case. And there's something called Lennon data. Uh, the Lennon data um, is the statistical information around passion numbers. And we were able, over that period, to prove to Westminster and Whitehall that the numbers who are travelling between Liverpool city centre to London are now greater than they are from Leeds to London for the first time ever. And the number of passengers who are coming from London to Liverpool is outstripped Liverpool to London. 
so that our people come this way. In other words, the business case for HS2 now stacks up uh, and they've agreed. So Northern Powerhouse Rail, um, of which I'm on the, the, the board of um, uh, TFN, they've now agreed that we will, from Liverpool, be connected onto um, the HS2 network at a pinch point, which we've got the money for, about 400 million pounds, some of that's for us. It will then connect to, through the Delta to Manchester Airport and then to Manchester City Centre. And that then gives us north-south connectivity or west-east connectivity to, to Greater Manchester. It means that uh, we'll cut the journey down times now from roughly an hour, isn't it, between us and Manchester now, it's about 23 minutes. It means that we'll shave time, of course, additionally off us here to, to London, but in 15, 20 minutes, I don't think it really matters when you're on a train to London. In fact, two hours, I don't think is, is any time where you can do a bit of work, can't you, when you're on the train? So we, we are uh, looking at all of that. On the bus legislation, I, I, I think, yeah, it's a great callback if the committee wanted to look at just how complex.